<laughs> Let me go through. This is the Titan Intercontinental Ballistic Missile. Its mission, deliver a payload to a designated spot on the Earth's surface some 5,500 nautical miles away. Its warhead could level an entire city. The lethal giant is boosted on its way by raw power. Okay, so that is the other uh, lines down of asbestos over here. I mean, have a look at this. Follow me. Check this out. I'll put my mask back on. All that made black, all that asbestos is an entire debris field. Look at this. Now look down here. All the way across. These giant springs. This is where the uh, turbines were. So today's episode, we're going to show you exactly what we've been doing. The uh, elevator shaft, we've been decontaminating with the other uh, remediation and the abatement. Uh, we've had multiple samples. Um, we've, we've taken it to the lab with the analysis. Um, 17 tests, every test tested positive for the uh, all, every known contaminant. So uh, I'm going to give you a bit of a glimpse into uh, the uh, decontamination phase of a Titan I nuclear complex. But um, have a look at this. You can see how thick the asbestos is over here. Look at this. All these pipes that run all the way across here. Look at that. We've got fiberglass around the corners here. There's all those asbestos. Follow me here. This is the other nasty room. All these fiber, once airborne, it adheres to your lung. Eventually. The crazy thing is, asbestos was supposedly banned back in the day, you know. In the 50s and the 60s, uh, it, was, it was quite prevalent in um, most industries, you know, including the, the military. And it is still used today. Why? And I'll tell you why. Because they haven't found a particular compound that can replace asbestos. It's very versatile. It um, has a significant heat threshold. But um, look at this. Follow me over here. See all these pipes? That's my water well over here. That's 1,800 feet down into the aquifer. I need to get to that. That's crystal clear water. Uh, see all these pipes? These pipes need to be scrapped as well as all the um, contaminants down here. But uh, what are the prices? A gauntlet of challenges. So you need perseverance, you need to be incredibly stubborn, and it pays to be a Torian as well. I'm a Torian, stubborn, we always get what we want and we make it work, and um, we love challenges. We take the um, I am out of the word impossible. But uh, enjoy today's episode of a decontamination of a Titan One. See you now. So this is the elevator shaft, about six flights of stairs leading all the way down to the bottom where the, um, the seven ton blast doors are. You have an elevator car down the bottom that comes up all the way to the top and you have these access portal doors. Now the access portal doors are very, very tough. They're about 45 ton each. They would open up 
and the elevator car will come to the surface whatever too. Now that elevator car stopped working back in the, uh, back when it was decommissioned obviously. And uh, what is paramount now is that we need to, um, well, decontaminate the elevator shaft because the elevator shaft contains the actual stairs which lead into the actual portal down to the blast doors which open up to the other lobby area where the power dome and the control dome is. Now, uh, we've, we've, ac we've actually entered the um, elevator shaft uh, wearing hazmat suits and wearing a asbestos mask and um, we had analysts down there. We took multiple tests, we took multiple um, samples and every sample that we took um, in the laboratory, it, came up, it, it tested positive for known contaminants, asbestos, lead, and what have you over here. And act, the you're going to have to act a ton of uh, negative air machines. So it's like, no, I do the math right here. It's only 1.6, so it's common for two negative airs. Just really? Yeah. Well, I got a staffing company that's going to come and help me out with one for one to make the deep contamination. Well, I was doing the deep contamination. We'll do our best to kind of wrap that up and just kind of calm Excuse me. Yeah, no, we got to get in class. We're going to, that's the plan, that's the plan. Lawsuits, that's right here. If you recall from the previous episode, um, we were running the um, we, we located and unearthed the ammunition bunker, which was actually in the berm. And now that ammunition bunker has now been repurposed uh, into a tool shed. We've actually combined it with a temporary structure we've built over the access portal and the actual personnel entrance tunnel. Right there. 
So first up, we had to get the crew in there. Uh, we had to basically build a mobile shower, the actual access portal. Uh, so basically, when you, when you, when you take the, um, the hazmat suits off you, you have a shower, and then you put a fresh um, pair of clothes on as you come back to the surface. It's important that um, all contaminants are basically contained within a prescribed area, that is kind of thing. So that way, everything is enclosed in a contained environment. Uh, next to that, we also have our negative air pressure machines. It's very similar to like an air scrubber, for example. And like air scrubbers and negative air machines, you know, they're going to remove potentially dangerous particles from the air through a series of prescribed filters. And these filters prevent any individual from breathing in toxins that can ultimately lead to illness. I keep talking about asbestos, and for those who don't know what asbestos is, look, it's a heat resistant fibrous silicate mineral that can be woven into fabrics most likely, and um, it's used in a lot of fire resistant and insulating and plumbing materials and piping, whatever too. So asbestos, uh, widely used, uh, you know, uh, quite a few decades ago and is still often used uh, in industrial and military um, installations still today. We've built this temporary enclosure uh, which adjoins the actual tool shed which was formerly the uh, ammunition bunker and that now gives us a um, uh, an area of containment uh, which allows us to get changed into the, into the, um, uh, the hazmat suits, um, put our gas masks on, our proper gloves, we get taped up and that is and we're able to enter the access portal with safety, that is. We had to basically build about 60 feet of scaffolding uh, just to get all those hard to get areas, whatever, too. And we're talking about scraping uh, the asbestos and other contaminants of the actual metal because there was sort of corrosion in certain places over here. So with the scaffolding that allowed us to actually climb to certain places and uh, the rest of the crew have been trained specifically for these tasks when dealing with asbestos and all the all the asbestos and the contaminants were contained in bags hoisted up to the um, uh, surface level and then back to the ground level and then into um, asbestos dumpsters where all uh, hazardous waste will be placed in and then that basically gets treated at a different facility after that too.